Welcome to Hardware Asylum. We're back working on the Retro PC subwoofer project. In previous episodes, we took two Tang Band five and a quarter inch subwoofers, put them in an isobaric configuration. We also tested the theory of isobaric loading in that you can have the same base in half the space. Unfortunately, that particular box configuration did not do very well. And for a variety of reasons. One, isobaric loading doesn't necessarily work too well with modern day subwoofers. And in a way, the box was really just too small. The next project was how to double your base. For that project, what we did was we put two of our subwoofers into the same enclosure. The enclosure itself was really quite large, but it effectively allowed us to add an extra six decibels to our system without having to increase the power on the amplifier. Effectively, what that does is allows us to hit much lower notes without having to resort to much larger drivers. For the Retro PC subwoofer project, the intention was to get a lot of bass in a very small enclosure. Now off camera, I've been experimenting with a lot of different box designs. Some of those designs have made it out to the social media, including Instagram and Twitter. And in the end, what I came up with was this particular box design. Physically, this enclosure is the same size as the isobaric version that had the two drivers in a clamshell mounting about right here. And what I did instead was put the two subwoofers in the same airspace. We have a single port. The intention was that this would be a downward firing subwoofer enclosure. We have a single port out the front. And I was kind of channeling a little bit of Bose, a little bit of, uh, you know, Logitech in this regard. Unfortunately, while I am getting great frequency response and great results from this particular enclosure, the port is too small. We have some chuffing going on and when we get into the lower frequencies outside of the tuning range, it will blow air out about three feet in front of this box and it makes a lot of noise. I'm going to insert a clip right now. now you're going to need some pretty good headphones or good desktop speakers to hear this, but it should come across on the camera pretty well. I'm going to give you an example of what port noise sounds like. You can hear it in these notes. Right here, this is where the port is, this is where the air velocity gets faster than what the port can handle. And a good example of chuffing. There are several ways that we can address port noise. The first would be to, hey, let's just drop a, a woofer. So we only have one woofer in the box, make the box a little bit smaller. The port will then be able to handle the amount of air being pushed out by that subwoofer. But that's almost going in reverse of what we would like to do. Another is we can add a secondary two inch port to this particular box. That is something that I did for the half size isobaric enclosure. It didn't really work out too well and that's not really the direction I wanted to go with this particular enclosure. So again, going to WinISD, I started messing around with different port sizes. And it turns out if I do 2.45 inches, I can get a port that's a bit like that. Now, of course, you can't actually buy this port, but if you have a 3D printer, you can make something exactly like this. Now, what I did was I created a flange. Uh, we have a little bit of black filament that was left over in the printer before I started printing this. On the flange, I did build in a flare. You might be able to see it there. The flange, I did model in some room here to where we could glue it to the side of the box. It also kind of covers up the hole in case we screw up anything. The diameter, it was set to a hole saw that I have in my inventory already. And the height of it is a little bit more than the half inch thickness of the enclosure itself. Inside though, we have a recess, which is where our port comes into play. Now, as I mentioned, this is 3D printed, 2.45 inches in diameter. It has about an eighth of an inch of wall thickness. I added this little dressing here at the bottom because, hey, why not? Now, of course, when you combine these two, what this allows us to do is basically swap out the port if we have to make any changes or if we want to change the color or, you know, anything. At that point, the flange can stay in the box. We can pull the port out. Don't have to do any resealing because it's already sealed at the bottom. Now, with any luck, the extra diameter, the extra length, this new port 
We'll keep the tuning exactly the same in this particular enclosure. Now that we have the port and the rest of the electronics installed, let's fire this baby up. Okay, so I'm going to play the same track that we did earlier in this episode. And we'll see if the chuffing is still there or if it has subdued slightly. There was some chuffing in this part. Here's where it drops the frequency. There's still a little bit of chuffing in the background, but it's definitely not throwing air all the way out past the camera. Well, I'd say adding a much larger port did reduce the chuffing. It didn't remove it completely, but unfortunately, if I needed to do a much larger port, it's going to be one that kind of snakes around inside the enclosure, and that's just not going to work for this particular build. So I did a little testing before we started recording, but I did a little testing before we started recording here, and that chuffing really only occurs at really loud volumes at really low frequencies. So while it hasn't been removed completely, the impact of it has been reduced considerably. We'll go back into voiceover mode for this next part. And the question comes to mind as to why is this really a problem? And ultimately it's because we need to have a certain port length or a certain port size to eliminate chuffing because we are overextending our woofers into a frequency range that it is not efficient at. If you look at the TS parameters for the Tang Band five and a quarter inch subwoofer, the free air resonance is at 45 hertz, and that's generally where that speaker likes to operate. Since we want to have it hit a lot lower than that, I have the box tuned at 33 hertz. We have a 3 dB down point at 30 hertz, and that's what you can see on this chart. Now we do have a concept of the extended base shelf or the EBS box. And this is something that I really wanted to explore with this particular build and something that I did offline. And by increasing the port length from that two inch diameter from seven and three quarters up to 10 inches, I was able to drop the port tuning down to 28 hertz with a 3 dB down point at 25 hertz. Now, as you can see from the orange line, we do have a significant loss in bass amplification, but we do have an extended range. It goes all the way down to 25 hertz before it really becomes inaudible. And the way you compensate for this is you drive more power into your subwoofers and if your subwoofers cannot handle that amount of volume, you'll have them over excurting, you'll have them shooting out a whole lot of air in the ports, and it really can damage your system. But in the cases of hi-fi music or home theater, you would want to have that kind of a range. And that was something I was looking for in this particular project. Now, if we look at the optimal tuning for these Tang Band five and a quarter inch subwoofers, we need to have the port frequency tuning at 40 Hertz or 45 Hertz. That gives us a 3 dB down point at 35 hertz. And as you can see from that light blue line, we have a nice gain in amplitude across the frequency range. We do not hit very low. It does not go past 35 hertz. But at this point, the port can be half the size of the one that we put into this particular box. And since that port can be really short, we can make it much larger and alleviate this chuffing problem. To give you an idea of how that port tuning impacts a box and its amplitude, I'm gonna overlay the three tuning frequencies here. The red line is that extended base shelf. The green line is our optimal box, the one featured in this video. 
and the blue one is the optimal box. As you can see, we do have a nice amplification as the port gets smaller it's because the speakers are now becoming more efficient. Now this last chart I'm gonna show you is basically overlaying the speaker response. This is in the direct relation to that port. And as you can see, the orange line has that extended base range. The green line is kind of a compromise in between and that's the one that I built into this particular enclosure. And then we have the blue line, which is really the optimal and that will give you a nice amplification. It gives you a nice response and it becomes extremely efficient because you don't need to drive a lot of power into the subwoofers. But since I wanted to have low base, needed to hit hard and a small enclosure, that's kind of what we're dealing with here. And unfortunately, the downside of that is that I'm limited in the size of port that I can put in here without making some little folded horn, which really increases the size of the enclosure. And it does also limit the amount of power that I can drive into the box. So this is really going to be more of a, a low powered PC desktop speaker, which is perfect for our retro PC projects. As always, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.